Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to SRPC. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hey, we just wanted you to come in to the sounds and the songs of praise. And we're going to try that for a while. So as you come in on Sunday mornings, there's going to be music playing. That doesn't mean you can't have conversations. That doesn't mean you can't enter into worship. That doesn't mean you can't just sit and enjoy. Whatever is where you're at, we want you to be able to do. But you're going to hear that Sunday mornings as you come into worship. And we are so excited to be here today and to be joined together as God's people. We're going to continue our worship, but let me invite you to stand with me first. I'm going to pray for us, and then we'll turn it back over to our team. God, thank you for the gift of this day, the gift of life, and the gift of life together. Truly, you are the one, Jesus, who is most worthy to be praised. We simply want to do that today. So you, we give you our lives, we give you this time, and it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's continue in worship.
time for everything. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. And a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time. And when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to become his sons. Because you are his sons and daughters. God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts. The spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but God's child. And since you are his child, God has made you also an heir. We were waiting without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt that stone was moved for good for the lamb had conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born then the spirit lit the flame now the gospel truth of all
Jesus, it brings us great comfort that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. In a world where we feel like it's full of chaos and uncertainty, God, we are so relieved that you are the one who counts our days. You are the one who measures our steps and leads the way. So God, we just need to surrender. But surrender isn't just this posture of us standing static with our arms out and our hands open. It is being willing to go where God wants us to go, being willing to say, Lord Jesus, we are obedient to whatever it is that you are calling us to. That's the kind of surrender that we need to have this morning to our King of Kings. That's what we come here with today. And so God, we, we give you this time, we give you this place, we give you the words that will be spoken over us, spoken to us, God, sung over us, sung to us, God, and we are willing to surrender and be your obedient children. We bring this to you now with our honor and our praise to the holy name of Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. All right, thank you so much. Hey, let me invite you to have a seat if you'd like. My name is Mike. I'm one of the pastors, and uh, hey, it's great to see you. And uh, thank you, worship team. And uh, you know, we've had this November 13 on the calendar for a long time, and it's finally here. And uh, God is, this is an answer to prayer that God has brought for us, so we're so grateful for that. It may not be crossing the Red Sea or the River Jordan-like, but it did bring us across El Costa, and we're so glad that you guys made that journey to be here with us today. And um, I want to sp say special thanks to all those who've been serving behind the scenes so that this could happen, uh, especially our tech crew uh, led by, yeah, Matthew Tripp. Um, if you haven't met him yet, the young man on the phone back there calling the authorities, I don't know, but <laughs> Matthew has just been awesome. We just so appreciate you, brother, and all the hours. This is more than you imagine behind the scenes. Our worship team spent longer than they thought they'd have to yesterday because it's all new equipment. It's all these little things. So thank you, Sudale and the team. You've poured so much into this uh, behind the scenes. Our children and youth ministries, Beth Buzzboom and Julie Keene, who can't be here today, and others have been working to get that ready. And then, of course, we've got our brand new Aloha shirt teams, and we're so happy for them, our parking, our welcome teams, and our usher teams. And, uh, and I say that, one, to just thank them for their leadership, but also as an invitation. We hope that everybody can be on these teams, and uh, we could still use more on these teams to par help people park, to uh, welcome people as they come in, and to be ushers. So if you're not on a team already, uh, please talk to Phil Fay or Mike Goldsmith um, or Eric Jensen. They would love to hear from you, and you don't have to work every Sunday. We'd have different shifts, but you get to be part of us welcoming our community here as hopefully you feel welcome here this morning. Hey, uh, this is a special week in the life of our nation and uh, where we remember those who serve so that we can do these acts of service. Um, we have an amazing freedom of worship, whether it's over there or over here in this country, but there's people who've had to stand in harm's way so that freedom of worship can still be here for us. And I just want to say, if there's anyone here today, I hope there's some, who are serving in the military now or have served, would you do us the honor of just standing for a moment that we could recognize you here this morning? Do we have any veterans here this morning? And if you're online. Thank you so much. Thank you. And to those who are, um, are at home, thank you to you as well. Uh, we just so appreciate you and to your families as well. Well, this is a time where we also recognize our tithes and offerings, the gifts that make something like this move possible, gifts that God has used to carry us through our 25 years of ministry and our third location now, which is, you know, who knows, where God will lead one year, one decade to the next. But we're grateful. 
Thank you to so many of you who have been part of that. I want you to know our offering box also made it across the way from El Costa. It is there in the back. And so if you like to bring a, still a tangible gift to service, just know it's back there. But we know for many of you there's no change because you give digitally, so it kind of makes that easy. Um, for those, though, who send gifts in, we're grateful for that. But please know that address is not going to work at some point. So please uh, note our new office address, which is 3223 Crow Canyon Road, Suite 120. And that's going to be on our website, and you'll be hearing more about that. But just somewhere in your head, note that it will have to change at one point. With that said, I would love to just say a prayer for our gifts, our offerings, and then Pastor Mark's going to come share a word with us. Would you join me in prayer? Oh, Lord, we do give you thanks. You have been so faithful. There are so many answered prayers just that we could be here this morning. Lord, we thank you for Christ Community Church, that they were so gracious, Lord, to open up a place for us to come and worship on a Sunday morning. God, just bless them. May their generosity be reflected back on them and your grace and goodness. May they flourish even as we pray that we would flourish. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for all those who've been serving and been a part of this journey, not just with their financial gifts, which we praise you for, but also with uh, their bodies, with their minds, with their hearts. And Lord, we pray for those who are in our military, Lord, those who are serving actively now, those who have endured wounds of war or even families who've lost loved ones. Father, we pray your special grace, comfort, encouragement, and protection over those who right now are outstanding in that place. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us. We give all this back to you. And Lord, I pray especially that today and this week, that whatever gifts come in would be, in a sense, a first fruits offering. Lord, it shows in the Bible that when your people receive something from harvest, that very first one, they would give back to you a special gift. Lord, I pray that would be our hearts this morning, a first fruits of what you've given to us, that, Lord, you would be glorified even more so. Thank you so much for this morning, Lord. Thank you for the body of Christ. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, another tradition that we'd like to carry over is simply saying hello to one another. So we'd like to invite you for, to stand up for a moment, say hello to somebody that's near you. And if you're online, you can use the chat feature to say hello, or always feel free to send uh, uh, an email to us in the office. We'd love to hear from you too. God bless you. Hey, I hate to break up the fun time, but if you wouldn't mind finding your seat again, that would be terrific. Thank you, thank you. Please go ahead and grab a seat. This is so much fun to hear the buzz. Please go ahead and take a seat. Onliners, we're glad to have you with us. It's a good day. It's a good day here at SRPC. Wow, wow, what joy, what joy in this room. It's so fun. Hey, you know, as we begin our message today, and I hope you uh, were able to grab a, a bulletin as you came in this morning, I'm just reminded of this fact that, that some of you even now are in crisis because you came into this room and you said, okay, if this room was that room, where would my seat be, right? And then you looked at your seat and you realized that maybe someone else was in the seat that you would be if this room was that room and you were there, but now you're here. And so this is an opportunity for you to actually do something different, to sit in a different place, to get a new perspective, to change something. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Onliners, you're in crisis now too because you're seeing this background and it's not like it used to be. And you're going like this. Where, where is the church, right? Yeah. So change, and this thing is in the way of me. This change is all over the place. And here's the thing. We are going to experience change together. And what that means is 
we're not going to be perfect, but we're going to be full of grace as we do. We're going to figure this out as we go. But above all, we are thankful for God's goodness, aren't we? Could we just say thanks to God for this? Yeah. It was so important that Sam read for us out of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 today because God's word helps us navigate all of the changes, all of the seasons of life. So what I want to do this morning is I want to turn back to that most important passage and probably the most famous passage in the Bible about seasons and times of life. I want to give you the background first for the book of Ecclesiastes. The book of Ecclesiastes is part of what we call Old Testament wisdom literature. There, this is, uh, Proverbs is like that as well. Old Testament wisdom literature is a view into what life is like from God's perspective. Right at the beginning of Ecclesiastes, we learn that the author introduces us to a teacher. We don't know who that teacher is, but the author says, here's what the teacher says about life. And then he talks through the whole book from the vantage point. The teacher teaches through the whole book. And out of Ecclesiastes 3, we get this wonderful statement about the times and the seasons of life. There is a time for everything, says the teacher, and a season for every activity under heaven. It's one of the most famous and recognizable passages. And again, we read it this morning, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to tear, a time to mend, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing. So today, with the teacher's perspective on life in mind, I want us to look at four things. I I want us to look at a question, a burden, a breakthrough, and a step. A question, a burden, a breakthrough, and a step. Would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this season in our life together. And thank you for whatever season we're in individually. We pray that we would find your presence, your grace, and your faithfulness in it. In Jesus' name, amen. First, a question. Here it is. What season am I in? That's the question. What season am I in? This passage compels us to ask the question, hey, what season am I I in in life? And what's interesting is when you read Ecclesiastes 3, almost every life experience is connected with the seasons of life that the teacher describes. A time to be born and a time to die. A little over five years ago, our first granddaughter, Hadley, was born. It was a wonderful day. A week later, my mother passed away. And we live that season, a time to be born and a time to die. Some of you know those seasons. The holiday season is coming up, right? And that's a time when all the family gathers together, and you know what that can be. It can be wonderful, but it can also be stressful. And for those of us that live in family scenarios where things might be torn, the Bible says there's a time to tear and there's a time to mend. And maybe this holiday season, your prayer is, God, could we do some mending this holiday season with family? And maybe even with friends. A time to tear and a time to mend. You know, we've been moving out of our old building there. And I came across this in Proverbs 3. I'm sorry, in Ecclesiastes 3. There's a time to throw. And there's a time to keep. (laughs) We've been throwing. And we've been keeping. There's a time to be silent and there's a time to speak. Those of you who parents who are parents, you know this, right? You know there's a time with your kids to be silent, to allow them to learn, sometimes the hard way. And you know as a parent, sometimes it's a time to speak, a time to address some things, and a time to help our kids get back on a path so they understand the big picture of life, so they understand faith and a relationship with God in life. We know that in friendships too. There's a time to speak, and there's a time not to speak. Every situation, every circumstance in life can really be framed up around Ecclesiastes chapter 3. What season is it for you? 
See, what you do with all those thoughts and all those feelings that the season brings is that we have to carry them with us and to process them well, we have to make space and we have to pray through those seasons. The New Testament actually encourages us to do that. Remember the book of Philippians, chapter 3, where the Apostle Paul says, don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, with prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Pray. And then the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard and keep your hearts and minds, hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus. What do you do with all those feelings and thoughts that come in those seasons? You offer them to God in prayer. Inviting, trusting, asking for God's peace and God's wisdom. So in this season at SRPC, we've been intentional in doing that. And those of you who were with us last week at our other campus, you remember the opportunity that we gave you to walk through the building, upstairs and downstairs, and to see scripture verses by different rooms and just reflect and remember and give thanks and then pray for the future because what we do in those seasons is we make space to reflect to pray and to process what season is it that's the question for you there's also a burden that comes with life life on earth comes with a burden now let me read from verse 10 of ecclesiastes chapter 3 I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He's made everything beautiful in its time. He's also set eternity in the human heart. Yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. The teacher is clear about the truth that there is a burden that comes with the human life. And the burden is, is this. We have this sense of eternity. We have this longing for eternity, for things to matter and to last forever, but we are bound by the limits of time. We have a longing, but we're limited as human beings. We cannot just stop time and stay in a season. If you've ever watched a beautiful sunset on a beach, you know what I'm talking about. I wish it would just last. If you've ever enjoyed an incredible meal with friends or family, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, what can't this last? If you've ever held your newborn child or grandchild, you know what I'm talking about. Why can't this last? You can't stop and stay in that moment forever. The Bible tells us that time moves on. And that is the burden of being human. Whenever we have our, a deep experience where our, our, our deepest longings seem to approach fulfillment, there's change. Things change. And Ecclesiastes has a word for it. It's the word hebel. Now, if you have a Bible and you know the Bible or the book of Ecclesiastes, you might see it in your Bible translated the word meaningless or vanity. That word is the word hevel, and it's used over 40 times in the book of Ecclesiastes. A better translation of the word hevel, hevel is smoke. It's such a good image because what smoke is, it's something you can see, but you can't hold on to. And the teacher says, life is like that. That's the burden of being human. You see something, you want something, you grab it, hoping it will last, and it doesn't. It's like smoke. Then there's a breakthrough. There's a breakthrough. And the breakthrough is this, and, and the teacher alludes to this. There is a God who is the source of every good gift that we've just talked about. And the teacher talks about that in verses 12 and 13. He says, I know there's nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. Listen, this is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Everything God does will endure forever. See, the breakthrough is this, that there is a God who is the source of those good gifts. 
who's the source of the gifts and the seasons that you would want to last forever. And even though you can't hold those great moments, there's a God who gives them to us. And just by the fact that he's giving them to us, we know that he is a good and a loving God. That's what the teacher says. These are the gifts of God. Now, two weeks from now, we're going to begin the Advent season. It's the time when we ramp up for Christmas, right? Everything starts happening. But in the Christian year, in the Christian calendar, the season of Advent is a season when we begin leaning in and anticipating Christmas. And what is the message of Christmas? The message of Christmas at its core is this, that this good and loving God who gives these wonderful gifts has broken into our world and made himself known to us. So God isn't just a mystery that needs to be discerned through these gifts and these things in life, but God makes himself known to us. And God does that to show that what we really long for, listen, what we really long for in this mom those moments that we wish we could hang on to, what we really long for is one who's bigger than any season that we go through, who will be with us in every season we're in. That's what we long for. A God who's bigger than any season who will be with us in every season. The Bible says that that's what happens when Jesus comes into the world. Let me take you to John chapter 1 where God talks about, or the, the gospel writer talks about the arrival of Jesus. Here's the way he puts it. In the beginning was the word, eternity, right? And the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that was made. That's eternity. Listen to verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The gift of God became the gift of God to us. Jesus Christ has broken into the world. That's the breakthrough. This Jesus who is so big and so faithful and loving has broken into our time and space so that we could hold the one thing that really lasts forever. That's the breakthrough. That's what you and I get when we receive and respond to Jesus. You know, Jesus is so important to us that we have made him the center point of our vision and our mission here at SRPC. Our vision at SRPC is to be a Jesus-focused community, impacting the world and serving the faith and the life needs of the San Ramon Valley. We believe Jesus is that big, that he will be our one and only focus. And then our mission is to lead people, including me, including you, lead people into a growing relationship, not with a church, not with a denomination, not with our friends, to be, lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus. That is what we're about. And it comes from here. It comes from the scriptures. Because God has broken through. Our burden has been broken because God has broken through in the person of Jesus Christ. So what's the step? What's the step I would invite you to make today? The step is to build a relationship with Jesus. Plain and simple. Just to build a relationship with Jesus. Now for some of us, that may be a startup kind of thought. I mean, we know about Jesus, right? We've heard about him. We, we know there's some stuff in the Bible about him. We know that he was a historical figure. We know he lived a great life. We know he did pretty impressive things. We, we know about Jesus, but we've never made him personal for us. We've never built a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is in our head. We get it, but he's not in our heart. If that's where you're at this morning, either in the room or online, I'm going to give you in just a moment an opportunity to, to begin that relationship, to begin to build a relationship that's not just intellectual knowledge, I get it, Jesus lived and all that stuff, 
but a relationship of the heart with Jesus. With the one who is bigger than any season and with you in every season. I want to do that for you today. Some of us are here today, and, and it's, it's not a startup thing for us. It's a restart. Because here's what happens over time, and, and this is true of me. I'm sure it's true of, of all of us who've, who've been in the church, who've been with God's people for a while. We kind of get used to it. And we just do our thing, and we don't think about it a whole lot. Well, it's church. We've got to go to church. We've got to do our thing. We've got to go to Bible study. We should read our Bible. We've got to do good things, all that kind of stuff. We just go through the motions. And we sort of checked out of that personal, thriving relationship with Jesus. And today, for you, might be an opportunity to restart, right? To build that relationship with Jesus in a restart kind of a way. Here's the thing. Jesus is the one and only durable one throughout time and history. The teacher points this out. He, he tells us what we know. Times and seasons change. Life is like smoke. We try to grab it and it gets away from us. But what the teacher hints at, we know has been fulfilled. God has come into the world in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the greatest gift, not only now, but into eternity. And he wants to build a relationship with you. He wants to build a relationship with me. That's the gift that we can respond to today. Let me invite you, just for a moment, onlineers too, to bow your heads and close your eyes. And let me just lead you through a brief prayer that I hope will... Help us take one step forward. God, you are a good and loving and generous giver. And Jesus, you are the true and the greatest gift. Jesus, you are the one who wants to be with us in every season of life. We thank you that what was hinted at in the Old Testament has been fulfilled in the new. Jesus, you have broken through time and history and made yourself available to us as the greatest enduring gift of all. If you're here this morning or, or watching online and you are in a place where you want to start a relationship with Jesus, that, that your thoughts about Jesus are more academic or intellectual. You understand there was a historical figure and he did impressive things. You know that. Check the fact box. But you've never really invited him into your heart. I just, I want to lead you in a prayer. A simple prayer where you can do that today. Where you can take that step and build a relationship with Jesus. If that's where you're at today, would you just, in the quiet of your heart, pray along with me. God, thank you for breaking through into the world through Jesus. Thank you for breaking into my life today through Jesus. Jesus, I want a relationship with you that's not just about the head, but that comes from the heart. And so by faith, I invite you into my heart. I pray that today we would start a journey of faith together and that I would see more clearly that you are the great and true giver and the greatest and truest gift you've given me is you. Help me start that relationship and build it day by day. If you're here today and it's a restart day for you, if you're a person that realizes after some reflection that you're kind of just going through the motions of faith, you're showing up and doing things, but, but it's going through the motions. Again, in the quiet of your heart, would you pray this prayer along with me? God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you that I have a relationship with him. But I admit 
I've sidelined you, Jesus. I go through the motions a lot. I show up at right places at right times. I do the right things. But it's not heartfelt very much anymore. And so, Lord, today I recommit my life to you. I commit to making you the center of my life of my comings and my goings, of every circumstance and season in my life. Thank you that you want to accompany me in everything. I pray that I would lean hard into that truth and to let you into new places and new parts of my life as I build my relationship with you. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, today as we get ready to close our worship, I, I asked if the worship team would sing this song, 10,000 Reasons. Because to me, it just, it, it's such a great picture of all that we have to be thankful for. And before they, they lead us in that song, I just want to say to you, if, if today for you was a first-time start, in building a relationship with Jesus, I would love to talk to you after the service and just encourage you along your way and resource you with anything that, that we as a church and I personally can make available to you. And if this is a restart for you and you want to really anchor that in a prayer with a person, I invite you to find either Pastor Mike or myself or go over to the prayer corner, which is going to be over here to your right. After the service, there'll be a couple of people to pray. But we don't want to do this alone. We are together on this journey with Jesus. Well, let's stand and join our worship team singing 10,000 Reasons.
worried I'm going to jump a note too early <laughs> and then I'm going to have to sing although as Mark Miller reminded me sometimes I leave my mic on and end up singing anyway <laughs> it was taken yeah. from me today hey we are just so glad that you're here um, this morning and this is just a beginning and we as we say many times when we worship here this is really just a kickoff for the week this is not a one and done thing this is part of our yeah. hopefully ongoing journey and thank you for your invitation here you a few things to mention before we uh, take off today and one is um we have an open house in our office that we'd love for you to come to after the service, uh, 3223 Crow Canyon Road. It's on the corner there, uh, right? Well, if you know where Carl's Jr. is or Burger King, <laughs> and you kind of align those together, that's where our office is there on the go. opposite corner there. And we're going to have coffee and donuts. So please come after the service Ooh. for that. Mark's going to rush yes. down there. If you get ahead of him, uh, just wait. We'll open the door, but I he promise. needs to get there to open it after for you. After I eat a few donuts. Or, well, okay, there you go. Um, hey, kids, you have a painting event, event today, 1030 at our old church. Yep. Uh, we've cleared some space for you um, amidst everything else. But anyway, 1030, there's going to be some games and some painting there, so go for that. Um, also, we could still use some help moving. Um, even though we're here and all nice, uh, there's still things in our church that we're hoping to take to savers or that we want to move to storage or some stuff here, some to our office. If you have an SUV, or a pickup truck we would love to hear from you and sometime between Tuesday and Friday you could help us kind of take some things out of there that would be awesome you can contact me or the church office for that hey next Sunday actually launches Thanksgiving week hard to believe mm -hmm. and one of the traditions we've had here is to take that service to give testimonies of Thanksgiving and so Mark condenses his uh, sermon his message a little bit to leave room to hear from you we'll pass a mic around and I would just like to ask whether you end up sharing or not, would you bring one thing that you would give thanks to, to God? Mm -hmm. We hope everyone will get a chance, but even if you don't, that you would have that thing, and, and it's okay if it's short. In fact, that's actually better because then more people can share. Um, but you, just before God, uh, the Bible tells us it's so important that we share God's goodness with other people in the assembly of his people. Mm -hmm. So we honor him when we do that. I just encourage you to do that. It'll be a fun time next Sunday. Yeah. Advent's around the corner, which means one of our favorite uh, ministries we do is Project Angel Tree, where we reach out to children of incarcerated parents over the Christmas time. It's all organized for us. And uh, you'll be hearing a lot more about that next week. But we, uh, Sue Lim, who God bless her, is willing to continue leading this, could use some people to help make phone calls to help make arrangements for these families. If you're willing to do that, please contact Sue or the church office. And finally, we want to continue to offer prayer, which Mark mentioned earlier today. So there'll be a couple folks over here in the corner to do that. But Mark, I want to do one more thing before we go. Okay. You know, and they say when there's oh, a yes. big event, people say they were there, but then they look at it and there's like, you know, way more people than could have fit in the stadium. Yeah, yeah. So this is our proof shot. I'm going to take Oh, right man, here. I love it. This is so <laughs> this great. Is for, this is for real. So <laughs> smile really big. Everyone, oh, there you go. Oh, this is a pano. Yeah, this is good. This is good. Right. I love it. 
Way to capture the moment of the first day. That's fantastic. Hey, uh, just bef before you leave today, uh, just amazing things actually have to happen up front here after a service because uh, Christ Community Church comes in and they uh, start their service at 11 o'clock. So we are going to be paying super a lot of attention to getting things transitioned up here. So we invite you to either go for prayer or head on out to the lobby and out to the patio. It's beautiful out there if you want to chat a little bit. Make sure as you go, you clean up around you so the next congregation that comes in can have a nice worship space. And then we will see you down for donuts and coffee at our new office just in a very few short minutes. Let me send you out with this blessing. And now to him who is able, by the power at work within you, to do exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Jesus Christ throughout all generations, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you and thanks for being here today. Have a great week. Oh.